Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So, back in the trap, back in here, you know, getting it how I live, back in here, you know, grinding, back to reality, all that good stuff. So, today is Thursday, um, May, I don't even know what today is. What is today? May 9th? Let me check out. Okay. Today is May 10th, and we are back from um, California. It was good while it lasted, you know. Um, family time is so very important, but I did miss my little sweethearts. I did miss my angels. Um, when I came back, it was like I never left, except for the mounting of paperwork I have to do. I mean, it, it's just like the end of the year type stuff, like where you have to unwind your classroom and uh like shut everything down and get it get all the grades and stuff like that and it is like stuff like that i have to do that i'm currently doing um grades and what else i have to do this uh i wanted to show y'all this okay so i wanted to show y'all this i have to do this uh Gilliam autism rating scale because one of my students I don't know if y'all was uh, seen a video of one of my teacher vlogs a couple weeks ago but I went to a um but I went to a meeting and um this is the next step to see if the child is um has, has any signs of autism so I have to fill out this it is just basically a questionnaire and you just fill it out based on the child's um developments or lack thereof um uh, in behaviors so like just i'm gonna read a few questions to you displays ritualistic or compulsive behaviors engages in stereotype behaviors when playing with toys or objects um that's for restricted repetitive behaviors um flicks fingers rapidly in front of eyes for periods of five seconds or more um does not initiate conversation with peers or others that's social interaction i mean it's just different parts of it. we have social communication emotional responses cognitive style uh maladaptive speech and then you just rate them all grade them all and check off what uh what his his score is and so I'm going to go ahead and try to get done with this today because I also might have the student performance level list for next year I need to complete. And that's a headache. I mean, like, that's just a headache. So I need to do that for next year. Anyway, today was a pretty good day. I don't have any complaints. I don't have any uh, problems of... Uh, what happened today? We did do a lot. We did do sexy. We're not finished with sexy yet. Right now, I'm going to show y'all a lot of sexy. My assistant, which I'm so thankful and grateful for, she uh was still doing sexy while I was gone, so they did not miss their sexy lesson. But today, we did uh, lesson 137, the rule VCCV. Now, this is really intense when it comes to kindergarten because a lot of them have a hard time keeping all the rules straight. So, uh, starting in the beginning, we put the rules up. So, we started off with the VC rule, KFC spelling rule. Then we did combination QU. Then the long uh, vowel, final K spelling rule. Then we have diagraph CK, diagraph SH, diagraph TH, diagraph TH, diagraph OO, diagraph OO. Then the uh, vowel consonant E rule. By a consonant silent E rule, then so you, these are the different examples A consonant E, O consonant E, I consonant E, U consonant E, E consonant E, diagraph CH, diagraph E, E, combination R, combination OR, and combination ER. So, this is not your average kindergarten and what i mean by that is this is not the kindergarten we're used to i know y'all used to like just shapes and colors which we have those over here of course we got our shapes we got our birthday calendar we have our calm down center we have uh more shapes um we have like all our 
fine motor skills and stuff. And I go into this deeper. We got all this stuff. Then we have our word wall, of course. And we have the words that's on here. Most of the words that's on here, they should have come in kindergarten knowing. A lot of them didn't. And so we end up going over these words and add new words. And we still have our colors and our numbers and stuff like that. Days of the week, months of the year. Numbers, things like that. But when you're really talking about reading and literacy comprehension and understanding this is a brand new ball game and so for any teachers out there or even parents who, who whoever whoever you are out there who's um ha who's invested in early education who has a child going into some type of early education program um the best thing that you can do for your child is giving them a uh like a start a, a head start or or not like the head start like the head start uh school program but like a head start as far as making sure you're going over a lot of things at home um now in saxon i must say it does start off teaching each letter it doesn't just go to a straight reading you have to teach um l-o-g first sound out l-o-g and the word is law and this is built this concept on uh letter sounds and forming words so letters make sounds sounds make words words make sentences sentences make paragraphs paragraphs make stories different things like that so it is a it is built on um prior knowledge the problem is saxon and i know i'm a saxon advocate i really do love saxon but what i've noticed is saxon can go fast and that's when you take a step back and you have to reteach something or continuously go over it excuse me y'all my nose is like i'll stop it but you have to continuously go over it continuously monitor it continuously uh make sure that your students are getting what they need and it's especially helpful in the uh in the small group setting um one thing i did do that i hate i did i did do that i kind of hate i did is that i dropped the ball on uh small groups because it was just so easy for me to not do small groups hit it whole group uh pull one or two kids for intervention and not really have those small groups going and i really hate i did do that because it it does it, it does make it hard it does it well no it doesn't make it hard it would make it easier if i would have been doing small groups all along but you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, my kids did get what they needed. Uh, it's a learning process for me and for them. And I don't mind admitting that. I don't mind admitting that I'm uh, learning while they're learning. I don't mind admitting that uh, I'm still trying to get used to uh, Saxon and Wonders. I mean, Wonders, just I'm going to have like a reflection video. But like Wonders, we started off our school, started using Wonders. Last year we used Journeys. I, I like journeys. I didn't have a problem with journeys. Journeys was easy to follow for me as a teacher. And then we started doing uh, wonders this year. We jumped into wonders without, well, I didn't have a training. And I was wondering, like, when did these other teachers go to trainings? And one second grade teacher told me that only, like, the upper grades went. I don't know how true that is because I don't remember even hearing about a program. It, uh, a meet or whatever. What am I trying to say? Uh, training anyway so long story short we were thrown into wonders and you know it was kind of like a, a sink or swim type thing <laughs> almost and i just kind of like i didn't necessarily give up but i didn't do wonders like i should and looking back on it everybody saying how wonderful wonders is wonders was just a lot of work wonders was really intense wonders was uh just a, a more than i anticipated and honestly i was not prepared for wonders this year i feel like well, this year i feel like next year i will be more prepared um hopefully you know everything will go according to plan and i won't have any problems but i don't know this past year wonders was a mess and then not only that but we did not have enough um 
books for all our students so like our teacher we have three kindergarten classes we all had three sets of books the other teacher did have a workbook hey bye hey what's up 